Hey guys, Matt from Total MTG here, and it's Deck Tech Tuesday. So this week, it's a pauper brew. It's blue green slivers. So why are we going to play slivers? Slivers is a nice aggro deck where we can just continuously dump a stream of creatures on the battlefield. Lots of slivers, overwhelming, and hopefully outvalue our opponent. That's the plan, anyway. Um, you know, it's a fun sort of tribal deck. Um, most common probably is green white, but I'm going for blue green. You know, I love blue. So we're going to have a look at the deck in a minute. It, like I said, it is an aggro deck, and it means we have to, you know, hopefully get onto the, you know, get all our creatures on the battlefield, pile it very quickly, get our threats down, and make it really hard for our opponent to deal with. That's the strategy that we're going for. You know, it's 29 creatures, only nine other spells, which is roughly about right, and we run 22 lands. Probably could drop to between 20 and 22 is about right. But we're going to start Charleston, um, start off with 22, see how it goes, and maybe we can drop down and maybe add in the extra sliver. So let's have a look at our creatures. We start off with a four of metallic sliver, just a one one cost colourless, very easy for us to cast in there for make the um, curve really you know a lot better. And when it's pumped up with certain other slivers like. Muscle Sliver and Predatory Sliver, which both give our um, Slivers all plus one, one. That will make it, buff it up, and it could be anything, you know, it could be a two, two, three, three, four, four. Gem Hide Sliver will help us tap for one manner of any colour, helps us ramp out so we, you know, don't get their attacks in, get more creatures out, play more, get more threats on the board so we can just overwhelm the opponent, like I said. Have a look at the rest of some other the Slivers we run. Um, four of Wing Sliver. Nice bit of evasion, which is why I like blue as well. Gives all our sliver creatures flying, which is really good. Uh, horn sliver gives them trample, so we can just go over the top. And, you know, if we don't have the flying, we can just trample over the top. We hope we're buffing all the creatures up and making them hard to stop. We've also got Menomonic. I can never say that. Menomonic sliver. All slivers have two. Sacrifice is permanent and draw a card. If we did, you know, if we're stalling the board out, it may help us find something that'd be really good. Maybe it help us find one of our other spells or another sliver, so we can just, just you know, a better sliver, maybe a pump sliver or something like that, that would be more certain, more helpful than ones we have on the board. Shadow sliver as well. It's two and a blue. Gives all our slivers shadow, which means they can block or be blocked by any creatures with sliver uh, with shadow. So I can't get my words out. It's too early this morning. Um, this will be good. This is evasion as well. Obviously means we can only block creatures with shadow, but it does mean we might be able to get free attacks in. You know, if they haven't got shadow as well, this is going to make it easy for us to get in our extra bit of damage, bit of aggro, and this will make us difficult to deal with. So let's get on to the spells. Nine spells, starting with a three of commune with nature. Sift through our deck. Look at the top five cards in your library. You may have a creature card from among them. Put in your hand the rest on the bottom of your library. So, you know, they get siphoned back into the deck anyway. And we should, you know, with nearly half our deck is slivers. You know, 29, half the deck nearly. We should be able to find a sliver with the commune. Bit of evasion luck like again with Vines of Arsewood, which is also good if it can be kicked. Target creature can't be the target of spells or ability permanent control if you pay that extra one for the kicker. Gives them plus 4-4, four, four, which is a big swing if you've got trample or flying. Could be all we need just to win the game, really. And Luminescent Rain, I really like this card. You choose a creature type, which obviously for us is Slivers. Then you gain two life for each permanent control. Um, originally it was in the side box. I think good coming in against more, more aggro decks like the Mono Reds and stuff like that. But I think just a couple of in the main to get that extra bit of life could be really, really helpful. And it could be worth anything up to... You know, up to anything. It could be if we've got 10 on the board. It could be worth 20. Like, you know, it could be that stupid. It could be really, really good. So let's have a look at the lands. Lands are obviously really basic, which is why we're sticking to two colours and not going for three or four, with it, which you can do with slivers. There's not enough to make a mono sliver deck. There's just not enough good enough creatures. So that's why we went for the two. 11 forests, five islands, uh, four thornwood falls, and a couple of tranquil thicket. Just in case we want to cycle, it's good for cycling, tranquil thicket. Comes in tax, which is slow, but we'll probably be your using it for the cycling, which is cost one green, discard the card from your hand, and draw a card. And obviously cycling is very, very it's going to be very common now with Alan Kett, so this is when we get used to playing it. Um, so let's have a little look at the sideboard. We start off with three aerial volleys, 
Deals 3 damage to dividers you choose among 1, 2, 3 target creatures with flying. Just in case we haven't got our winged out, this will help us against a, you know, a heavy flying deck. 3 gut shot, what we use for the Perexian life, because we're not running red. But just good enough to put in there. Deals 1 damage to target creature or player. Some annoying creatures you might just be able to kill, obviously with 1 toughness. And it might just be a final little push on the player where you just hit them for the rest of their life. Against graveyard decks, we've got a couple of relic of progenitus. Uh, everyone knows what relic does. Helpful, you get them to remove cards from the graveyard. Good against um, what they call the old 5-5 five, five Gurmag Angler decks. We can, you know, hopefully help them against that. Vapor Snag as well. Return target creature is on his hand. Like I was talking about um, Gurmag Angler as well. It's very heavily played in Pauper. And this will just return to hand if we can't do anything about it straight away. This is a good, you know, good card that they get rid of their graveyard. Vapor snag it, then they're left with that big creature to cast with. Sometimes they just can't cast after doing the um, doing the delve once. Couple of naturalized destroy target artifact enchantment, good against them. And a couple of wrapping uh, wrapping vigor. I do like this card. It only costs one and a green to regenerate each creature you control, so we can attack in. You know, just force attacks. Some might die, but then we just regenerate them with wrapping vigor. We might get some good trade offs. And set us up for the next attack. Or if someone's trying to destroy our creatures somehow. This is obviously good for that as well. So this has been my blue-green uh, slivers deck. Just $28. Which is, you know, it's very cheap. It's not obviously budgety budgety for pauper. Because you could obviously probably make some very, very cheap decks. But this isn't overly expensive. It's not going to tax everyone too much on their wallets. And, um, you know, tribal decks are very fun decks to pilot. They have flexibility, they have a lot of resilience because you've got a lot of creatures there. So, you know, it is an aggro deck. Maybe not as quick as Mono Red, but hopefully we will be able to storm the battlefield with lots of creatures. We've got a bit of life gain to come against those type of aggro decks, and our late game hopefully should be better. That's the plan anyway. So, any ideas for the deck? As always, leave it in the comments. Uh, video gets lots of thumbs up. I'll probably try and make it on MTGO. And then we'll run some games of it. Um, we don't get much pauper action on uh, Total MTG. But it's something that I want to go into. Like I'm going into the Commander series. Doing a bit, you know, different formats. So, you know, it appeals to everyone, hopefully. Uh, if you haven't entered our 2000 sub giveaway yet, make sure you go and do that. Your chance to win an Ammon Kit bundle. I will leave the link below. Everyone's free to enter as long as you're a sub. And there's lots of other ways you can enter as well. But being a sub is the main option that you have to do to win the have the chance to win it but this has been deck tip tuesday i hope you've enjoyed it all guys please leave a big like and subscribe that really helps and take care i'll see you soon